I'm going to move on quite quickly now, and I'd like to introduce uh, Jan Evelins from Axon Digital, who is going to uh, talk to us um, about AVB principles. Thank you, Mark. Good morning. I realize I'm the, uh, the video guy in the audio <laughs> lion's den here. So, but uh, I, I'm quite big, so I think I can handle this. Uh, let me first start with a show of hands. Who knows what AVB means? Okay, that's more than I thought. Second of the show of hands. Who knows what, how it actually works? Okay, a few less. Okay. Well, I hope at the end of my talk, all the hands will go up if I ask the same questions. So what I'm going to talk about uh, first is the principles of AVB. I'm also going to give you some uh, status update of where we are with, uh, with respect to, uh, to AVB. Um, an important element related to this type of technologies is interoperability and certification. I'm going to introduce to, the, to you that as well. And I will uh, uh, end this presentation with a summary why it matters to, to you. So what is AVB? Well, AVB stands for Audio Video Bridging. And this was a, is a set of standards that was created by the IEEE in the last few years. And I, I have copied here a, a, actually a quote from the IEEE AVB task group with their charter, which is the specifications that will allow time synchronized low latency streaming services through 802 networks. So why did the IEEE create AVB? Well, that's because uh, they realized that the standard Ethernet, as they had already for many years, had a couple of problems when trying to handle real-time video and audio streams. First of all, it's only best effort. So data probably will arrive, but there is no guarantee when. It's not very deterministic, so one day it m will work, the next day probably not. And there is also no concept of time in, an, in, an, in, an, in the network, an internet network. And worse, it's not content aware. So basically the, the network treats every packet the same. So an um, important audio video packet is treated the same as, your, as an email packet or another non-time sensitive uh, message. So what are the ingredients of uh, AVB? Actually, four uh, important uh, topics. One deals with time synchronization. Second thing is bandwidth reservation, traffic shaping, and also uh, configuration. And I will go through in, in more detail uh, on, in these topics. But before we do that, a little uh, terminology. So um, in AVB, we talk about streams. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, a source is called a talker. Um, the audio people were first. I mean, you, you can, can see as a video guy, I have a little problem with this, uh, with this terminology. And there is a listener, which is the destination. So uh, that receives a stream. And then you also have a, 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 a type which is called the controller, which basically works with the talkers and the listeners to manage the network. So let's talk a little bit about synchronization in AVB. So the aim was to create a system that guarantees accurate, absolute timing of all the, the nodes in the network. It's uh, based on the, st the standard that describes it's a IEEE 802.1 AS is actually a more tightly defined version of the IEEE 1588, which was just mentioned by Mark. It uses timestamps that are exchanged regularly between the nodes, and then that timestamp is based on, uh, on an epoch, which is way back in 1970. Important thing here in this system is that the switches play a role in this. So the Ethernet switches will actually measure the delay of the, the timestamps in the switch and we'll add a correction factor to, to, uh, to that. In this way, every node will receive the timestamp 
but with the, um, let's say, um, added uh, compensation factor, uh, it means that uh, all the nodes will actually re uh, receive, uh, even if it's not at the same time, but they will know the exact time. As explained by Mark, this needs no, you don't need any special reference infrastructure for this anymore. So this really solves timing in, in an Ethernet-based network. So that means that all the devices in the network, and I'm sorry this is more a video example, but you can, there are a couple of audio devices there as well. So you can see that all the devices basically have exactly the same time and they step to the time at the same pace. Okay, that was easy. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about how to, to make sure that we uh, manage the streams in the network such that we won't have any uh, disruption of streams, we don't have any drops of streams or other interference. So basically guarantee that a packet, an, an audio or video packet in an AVB network will arrive at the, the other side. So how does that work? Um, it's based on the, on the concept of, first of all, on every given link in the network to split that in two logical parts. One is uh, allocated to audio and video and other time sensitive data. And the other part is, uh, is for regular network traffic. Default, if you switch on the system, it means that you have 75% on your link is for audio and video data and 25% is for um, legacy traffic for all the other traffic on the network. But this percentage can be adjusted easily in the switch by just uh, assigning a different value to each link. So in this way, the, the uh, audio video data is separated from the rest of the traffic. And this, the switches and the nodes work all together to make sure that in no circumstance the control and uh, other data, so the legacy data, can take bandwidth away uh, for, from the audio and video. Likewise, the switches will also uh, protect the legacy data so that the, the audio and video data can never grow more than the maximum that has been set. And that's important because if your control network is also on the same system, you don't want to have the situation where you add another audio or video and suddenly your control is no longer there because you have taken all the, net, the, the bandwidth on the network. Inside the uh, audio and video piece, there is also uh, a uh, bandwidth management per stream. So every stream that is inside that audio video pipe is carefully uh, managed. And I will show you in a minute in a little bit more detail how that works. So it's important to note that in an AVB network it self manages the bandwidth. You don't have to think about it. This is handled automatically. You don't have to set anything. You just connect the devices and, uh, and, and you start to, uh, to work. It will only uh, impact you when the bandwidth is full, and I will show you what happens then. This also means that the talkers and, the, uh, and, the, and listeners, they need to request per, uh, permission before they can put a stream on the network. And AVB guarantees that that, net, that bandwidth is going to be available and not going to be taken by anything else. So how does that work? Well, this is again, this is more video centric, but it, I, I think you can again uh, translate it easily to audio by, with a microphone and a recorder or whatever. Um, so when you connect dev AVB devices to a network, there will be no automatic start of streams. First, they will all advertise themselves to the network, so everybody knows who is in the network. If, if a, a, a connection is to be set up, this is initiated uh, from the listener. So the listener will send what we call a subscribe message into the, the network, to the switch, and the switches will forward that subscribe message uh, to, the, to the talker. Along the way, the switches will check if there is sufficient bandwidth. In this case, because there is no other connection yet, um, this is okay, and the stream will start flowing. And as you can see, 25% in this example, I mean, I've taken a 10 gigabit link, and a two and a half gigabit uh, video stream, for an easy uh, calculation. Um, so uh, after three streams, in principle, the network should be full if we respect that 75% uh, boundary. So in this case, there's no problem yet, and that will, uh, will only come later when, I when I'm at the end. So what happens if a, s a second uh, listener will, wants to listen to that, or to receive that stream? It will send a subscribe, 
And this uh, switch actually will find out that that uh, uh, stream is already there and uh, it will uh, make a multicast copy and will start streaming to the other uh, listener. So we are fine. Now uh, there is another li uh, subscriber, a listener, who wants to subscribe to camera, t camera 2 in this case. This, uh, the, the requests are forwarded and as you can see there is still sufficient bandwidth so this one also starts to flow. Note that uh, on the two, two links between the switches, there is already 50% of the capacity taken. This uh, recorder wants to uh, connect to camera 3. It sends a subscribe. And also, still there is enough bandwidth. So this one is also allowed. But see that you see now that uh, on two of the links that connecting the, the two switches, we have now reached the maximum bandwidth. So what happens if, a, if, a, if another device uh, tries to do a subscribe to one of the sources that is in the critical path, then the switches will detect this and actually uh, they will not allow to set this connection to be set up, but they will send a subscribe fail back. So this device is not uh, allowed on the network. And that means all the other streams are fine, they continue to flow, they have not been interrupted. Only the device that is co going to overcommit or the stream that's going to overcommit the network will not be allowed on it. I think this is a very, very powerful system. And again, I mentioned that this is without any, uh, let's say, um, setup that you need to do. This is all under the hood. This all happens automatically. You don't have to think about it. Then there is also um, a piece in the standards that deals with forwarding and queuing and traffic shaping. This has to do with priority-based scheduling and what does that mean? That means that, um, and that's pretty logical, I think, time-sensitive streams get, uh, have the highest priority, so they get always sent first on an outgoing link. Uh, other data has to wait until the high-priority traffic has been, has been transmitted. Also, in an AVB network, the AVB nodes need to behave. That means they cannot send, they're not allowed to send bursts on the network. So, and especially camera is a good example. If, you, if the camera takes a snapshot, a picture, it's not allowed by the, uh, by the camera to send the, its uh, full frame of data at wire speed uh, to, the, to the switch. Now it has to space it out evenly over the complete frame time. Also, there is no jumbo frames allowed in an AVB network to avoid that links are occupied for too long and starvation can happen or buffer overflow could could occur and packets may be dropped. So this is a, a very simple analogy to, uh, to networking. It's basically traffic. Um, when there is light traffic, um, actually you don't need all this stuff. It probably will work without. I mean, everybody has space enough. All the packets can flow. There's no waiting times and everybody will get there on time uninterrupted. Nobody will get dropped. It gets difficult in this sort of situation where you have really heavy traffic. And that's where AVB has been designed for, not for us, uh, one or two streams on a link. Now this has been designed for optimizing and maximizing the capacity of the, of, the, of the network, or in this case, maximize traffic on the road. So this is if you wouldn't do anything, and this is how it works with AVB. You have separated uh, let's say lanes for different types of traffic and you make sure you have a uh, you avoid bursts into the networks with a kind of a stop and go mechanism. So the, the last element of AVB is actually the configuration protocol. The IEEE thought it was very important to also standardize the way the nodes talk to each other and to the controllers and also a standardized way to, uh, to do discovery and configuration of the, of, the, of, the, of the network, as well as to set up connections between the, uh, the, the different nodes. I didn't mention a lot of standards yet, and uh, this is the only slide that is really busy with uh, a lot of standards. This, this is, these are the five standards that describe, describe together the whole AVB portfolio. Um, I think these slides will be available for you, so you can look it up later. Um, important there are, to mention is that there are two, two, uh, 
two, two standards here, on the two on the bottom, that deal more with the transport layer and the configuration. The other two will deal with uh, timing and, uh, and the quality of service. So what can we transport with AVB? Well, actually, we can transport a lot. Um, with the new release of the IEEE 7022 uh, that will be published uh, early next year, there's a wealth of formats that is supported by AVB. Of course, we support uh, PCM audio in various uh, sample rates, bit depths, and so on, all the good things that Mark talked about. This AES3 type of uh, formatted audio, so we can transmit uh, things like Dolby E, also uh, in, uh, through a, a, a AVB. Um, SDI video can be um, transmitted as an encapsulated, uh, so we take the whole SDI video, including uh, the audio and other data in, in the blanking. But also we have defined what we call a raw uh, uh, video format, uh, so that takes only the active picture. And the good news of that is that we uh, reduce the amount of bandwidth we need, and so instead of ne uh, needing 3 gigabits per second for an SDI signal for 1080p, we only need about 2 gigabits per second. That's a big saving, especially at these rates. And we can also uh, transmit time-sensitive data. So we can actually send the ancillary data that we have in video systems um, or other metadata, metadata also in, uh, in a uh, time-sensitive way. Then it also supports all the, uh, the 1394 formats, because this was also a standard that the IEEE had, so it imp was imported as well. And so this also enables the transport uh, of compressed streams, so MPEG-2 transport streams, for example, but also other type of uh, formats, all the IEEE 3094 formats. And then there's also a possibility to stream certain RTP type of formats uh, onto AVB. And if this doesn't work for you, then there's always a possibility to do vendor specific, which of course is not recommended. So is AVB finished? No. No, there is a lot of ongoing work actually in, uh, in AVB. So they're working actually on a, both on evolution of standards, as I, as I uh, just described for the 1722 transport layer, but they're also working on what we call the next generation of, of AVB. Um, this is not so much driven from the audio video world like, that we know, like professional AV, but it's more driven from other industries that also are very interested in AVB. This is driven uh, by the automotive and, and factory automation, the industrial people. And because that's not so much about audio and video, it's, this is actually they, they decided to, to change the name AVB uh, and to a more generic name. So the new working group is actually called Time Sensitive Networking, or TSN. So if you hear TSN, you, you should just remember TSN is just the next step of AVB. And there is actually more focus on control and less on audio, as I mentioned in video. So what are the key improvements there? Well, they want to, to actually um, have even better network latencies for certain type of messages. They want to have overall network latency of, uh, of a few hundred microseconds only for certain messages. And for this, they are going to break with the Ethernet standard, actually, as we know it. They're going to allow packet interruption on transmission on the link. So even if uh, today a packet, when it gets transmitted, it will not be interrupted. But in the new scheme, an Ethernet packet can be interrupted and be replaced by a higher priority packet. And then only after that has been sent, that packet will be resumed. Um, it's quite complicated stuff, but it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work, they, t they tell me. They're also working on improved robustness, so uh, uh, redundancy switching. Uh, the target is to have a, a, a real seamless uh, 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 redundancy switching, where no packets get dropped or there is no uh, interference with anything. And improve sc scalability, so because these factories can be very big and all these robots in the, in the factory have many, uh, is already a big network in itself, they, they need to control a lot of nodes. I think most relevant for our industry is probably the, the better and seamless the redundancy switching that they're working on. So what are typical characteristics of an AVB network? Well, as, I, as I mentioned, all the nodes are fully synchronized to a very stable clock. And audio and video clocks can be recovered within, let's say, the professional specification that we expect. Very low overall latency. Typical only two milliseconds overall network delay. 
And this is true even if you have to go multiple hops, like seven, eight, or even more hops. As I mentioned, the network self manages the bandwidth. No need for a IT or network engineer to, to do something in, with your switches or whatever. You just plug, plug it together and it will work and it will protect you from making mistakes. And it uses multicast, as I have explained. So how real is this? It's very real. Um, switches up to 100 gigabits per second um, are, switches, are shipping now that support Ethernet AVB from multiple vendors. Several professional AVB audio products are on the market from multiple vendors, both in professional audio but also in intercoms. And also the first broadcast quality AVB video products have started shipping. An important thing also to mention is that compliance testing and certification process is up and running, and I will come to that in a minute. This is, a, I think, it was a very important milestone that we achieved this uh, early this year, um, when ESPN in the U.S. when they did their new DC2 facility, they went on air with AVB audio, and you see there the new facility, and also on the, on the right you see the, the two people, the senior people that were involved in this, and as you can see also in the picture, much less cables, only a couple of uh, fibers. I already mentioned interoperability. Why is this important? It's important because these standards that we talk about, networked audio video, are not simple. And the standard is not enough. And why is it not enough? Because in most cases, manufacturers like we are, are never implementing the whole standard. They will just pick a, a subset. And when that happens, they will also make a few mistakes. Um, and that means that if you connect two systems from two manufacturers together, the subset will be wrong, will not align, and there also will be bugs, so 100% uh, guarantee it won't work. So that's the reason why you need, do need, need to do a little, little bit more to create interoperability, which is important for the market. So uh, quite a few a group of big companies came together and said, we have to, have to make uh, sure that this is going to work and we have to fix this. So they set up what they call the Avenue Alliance. The Avenue Alliance has the same charter as Wi-Fi Alliance. Well, I think everybody has heard about the Wi-Fi Alliance. I think most people actually think that Wi-Fi means the technology. It's not the case. Wi-Fi is the alliance that does certification of wireless Ethernet devices. And as you can see, wireless Ethernet has been, become probably one of the most uh, powerful, most ubiquitous uh, technology around the world, the most successful. And that's because everywhere in the world you plug, or not, well, with wireless you don't really plug, but you connect to the network and it just works, even for very cheap consumer electronics. So. The, uh, the Avenue Alliance does promotion of AVB, but certainly is the, the biggest focus is on pro uh, test procedures and certification in, uh, for interoperability. It's not just for professional AV uh, uh, that we know of, but also for the industrial, automotive, and also consumer market. In fact, there is, uh, together with the Wi-Fi Alliance and the IEEE, they work on a wireless version of AVB. So these are the founding members of the Avenue Alliance. So big names in the networking industry and, and audio industry. So where is the Avenue Alliance today? More than 80 uh, members, big, big names. Some large companies have joined uh, in the last uh, 12 months, like BMW, Dolby, Crestron. Arista Networks joined as a second AVB switch manufacturer and is now extending into the industrial seg segment, as I mentioned. The first test and certification site is up and running. The University of New Hampshire, which does a lot of interoperability testing also for Ethernet in the US, is picked for this. And more tested and verification sites can be added quickly. The first AVB products have been certified from Extreme and some other audio products from Harman, and also very recently an XMOS audio module that is in, in a lot of OEM products has been certified. For video, we have, we have finished the first phase, what we call the, the market requirements. So what, does, what the Avenue Alliance does is to specify what the minimum requirements are 
So basically we define what the minimum subset of the standard is that we're going to support to make sure that everybody interoperates. So we have just finished the, that effort for video, basically up to HD level, and we expect certification to start in 2015, when the new standard that uh, I just mentioned, the IEEE 7022, is released. So, this is the final slide. So why is this important? Well, this is based on existing and open standards from a very reputable and successful standardization body, the IEEE. And Mark, uh, I kind of disagree with your fact that the AES and the SMT are the only sta standardization bodies that do something about media, because this is, the IEEE should be added to that, I think. It's important to say this is a framework for video, audio, and data. This is not just about video only, or, or about audio only, or data only. It's a complete framework, and it copes with everything. And you can mix video and audio and data together in one network, and it will manage it properly. It's plug and play. There's no conflicts with IP addresses, because we, in, in, on this level in the AVB network, we don't use a, uh, IP addresses. So really, it's like the, you connect a home, a net home network. You stick it all together, you set up the connection, and it will work, because it's foolproof. The network is self-managing it. And it's important to say it's also it's a perfect co uh, coexistence with uh, standard, uh, standard IP traffic on your network. So you, you can put your file-based uh, processing on, on this network or your, e or, your, or your office infrastructure. It will just work. This interoperability is being taken care of with a, uh, with a true certification process. And it's, it's proven. As, as I said, ESPN is on air with it. It's available now. Thank you. Thank you, Jan.